because I had surgery two weeks ago and I can't use my top teeth because I have to keep a stint in and that's why if my words don't sound that good it's because I have a stint in so I just wanted to apologize. Hey guys it is Maddie and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. Uh, hi welcome back to another uh, bi-monthly wrap-up. Bi-monthly wrap-up. I thought of that last month when I was uploading the other one so we're gonna keep that that. It was recent reads but now it's bi-monthly wrap-up. So hello how are you doing? Um, yes, we're going to talk about the books I read in May and June. I read seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I read seven. And um, I had surgery at the end of June. So if my mouth is a little... Not some of my words don't come out right. That's why I have a stint in here. Which by stint, I mean a cheap all-plastic retainer. Because it's, it's, that's what it is, basically. So. I do want to make a video on my surgery. I had my gums grafted, and it, I would like to make a video on my experience and, like, the recovery and everything like that. Because it was not, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I had a very high anxiety about it. So, I do want to make a video on that. But, I don't know how well it's going to turn out, because I have a tendency to have trouble filming videos that don't involve books or vlogs. And, um, well, that's not a vlog and doesn't have books in it, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let me shut up and talk about all the seven books I read. I also hit my Goodreads goal in June, halfway through that year, and I read 22 books. Mm, 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 mm. My goal was 20, and I hit 22 at the end of June, like the day, day 30. I had 22 books read, so I'm proud of me. Anyway, let's talk about the books. So, the first book I ended up reading in May, I have a vlog on the end of it, for my, it's my believe a vlog, and that was Everblaze by Shannon Messenger. I gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating. I do think it would have earned a 5 out of 5 star if the first 200 pages hadn't made me so, like, indecisive about my feelings, because I was, I don't, I was, I didn't know how to feel while reading the first 200 pages, but then the ending, if you watch my Believe a Thought vlog, my goodness, I was a sobbing mess. I had, I had snot pouring, like, from the tip of my nose. I was, oh, it was so sad, because so much sad stuff happens. I mean, first of all, happy sad thing, uh, Sophie finally calls Grady and Adeline mom and dad, okay, and... That's not spoilerly, I mean, it could be spoilerly, but it's not like a, oh, this character dies, which, uh, this character dies in this book, and then the whole, we ain't gonna let you use your powers, what, uh, this is like, this has to do with, like, talentless people and stuff like that, too, and if you've read it, you kind of get, like, what I'm saying, because I don't want to spoil anything, but it kind of has to do with not having powers, and it was emotional, it was emotional, but, um, yeah, and I'm not doing half ratings or anything like that, so it wouldn't get a 4.5. And I think another reason it helps, like, with the 4-star rating is because I did, I predicted who the big bad I worked with the Never Seen guy was. Um, my granny, I was like, granny, 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 this guy. I was like, this guy is part of the Never Seen. And my granny's like, no, Madison, I don't think, I don't think he is. I'm like, uh-uh. Granny, granny. He definitely is. And then it was revealed, and I'm like, oh, boom, Granny, I was right. But uh, this series is about a girl named Sophie who grew up in a human world. And one day while she's at a museum, she's like super smart and everything, but one day when she's at a museum, she is approached by a boy named Fitz. And Fitz finds out that she's an elf, and she is introduced into this whole elven world, and she's just drawn into this elven world and I don't really know the actual definition of the first book I just know the whole premise and that's the whole premise of the whole series and of the main character whose name is Sophie and I love this series so much so much so four to five stars to the very first book I read in May The next book I read in May was another book I read for Believe It Thought, and that is Wonderlight, Unicorns of the Mist by R.R. Russell. By the way, R.R. Russell is female. I don't know why. I just thought that it was a um, unicorn book written by a male. But it's actually written by a uh, 
girl by a female for her daughter I'm pretty sure which is so sweet I uh, gave this book a three out of five star rating for the first like a hundred and like fifty up to 200 pages I think I was really considering that this book was gonna get a five out of five star which is a surprise because I've had this book on my shelf since like fourth grade and I just wanted to see what my opinions on this book was gonna be and oh uh, well I enjoyed it up to the 200 page mark and then we hit page 200 I was just kind of like Oh my god, I want this book to be done. Why is it so long? And it's 288 pages. It's not that long of a book. And I just really wanted it to be over with. And so that's kind of why it dropped down from a 5 to a 3 real quick. I was like, um, I didn't enjoy this that much, realistically. But, um, yeah, this book is about Twig, who is being sent off to a island ranch, which is on, like, this, like, ghost island or whatever, um, because she is, she almost killed her sister, I think. Yeah, you don't really know why until, like, 50 pages in or something, but she's being sent off to this island, and there's this crazy little mist, and there's this ghost boy, and there's a unicorn, and there's a killer unicorn. It's a perfect book for young children who like unicorns, and I liked ch unicorns as a child, so. Um, yeah, this is, oh my god, I just popped my finger. <laughs> this is a good book, it was enjoyable, but I did get bored near the end, I just wanted it to be over. The next book I read is Never Seen, which is book four in the Keeper Thought City series, and I gave this book a two out of five star rating. I did not like it. I did not like it. Um, so, uh, yeah. This book is, so, from Jen from Jen's Bookshelf said in her review that she felt, she feels like this is a bridge book, and it is a bridge book. And if you read the book, you know what happens on a bridge, and it's a bridge book. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I like it so much. Anyway, uh, yes, this does feel like a bridge book, and um, it's really boring. Like, why? Why is it so freaking big? You get so much information about Never Seen and Black Swan in this book. It's just so boring. If... If anything that happened in this book comes back into play in the series, it's just, uh, I got no idea what happened. Because I was literally skipping pages of this book. I was like, all right, yep, information, information, information. I was just skipping paragraphs. I think I even skipped a whole chapter once. I was like, I don't care about you, Ogre King. I don't care about you or the plague. So when it was being discussed, and I was like, uh-uh. Uh-uh, I don't, I don't care. And then the whole big, we got another plot twist, which, which of the people you thought was a good guy is a bad guy in this book? You get another one of those, and I really don't care about that character. And even though, like, the, the book I'm on, I could care freaking less. I could care less about this character. I mean, he was nice in one of the other books, but, like, I don't have an attachment to him, and so when it was revealed that he was a bad guy, I was like, oh, moving on. Moving on to Lone Star by Shannon Messenger. I gave this a 5 out of 5 star re book rating, huh? I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I liked this. After reading Never Seen, it just felt like a nice, a nice little book that I missed. Keefe in. Um, and it just felt like a nice little read. And I really think one of the main reasons I like this book, first of all, this is one of my favorite covers, I have to say. Because I also really liked this scene. And while, like never seen and like the books that are following this a lot of stuff isn't happening until like the last 100 pages and that happened with this book but i didn't care i really liked this book okay phone shut up i really liked this book i liked the whole fact that the friendships you got to spend so much time with biana dex fitz like and the new characters, the new characters are little tongs. Nope, they're not tongs, they're songs, but like if you, okay. Anyway, I just, you got to hang out with them and it was so sweet. And I think one of my favorite things about this series, and this book specifically was the friendship dynamics. We had a sleepover in this book and I loved it so, so much. 
Um, I just love the friendship in this book, and so I definitely like this. And I really like this cover. I like that entire scene. And I, I this is the book. This is the book where my obsession with the covers started. Like, each book I was kind of like, I wonder like where this cover is. Like I would try to figure out the cover with a scene in the book, but this book was when I really got obsessed with it because Sophie's outfit was being described and she was like, Bianca gave me this really nice red tunic and I don't know why she's Southern, but Bianca gave me this really nice red tunic and so it feels like I got a new power and now it looks good with my gloves, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I was like, oh my god, she's got a red tunic on? She's got a red tunic? Dude, she's got a red tunic on the cover. What is gonna happen? Um, and it happened. And I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh. Um, I... <laughs> After Lodestar, I, fin I continued on with Nightfall. Um, and I give this a 3 out of 5 star rating. Look how big this book is. This book is so freaking big and nothing happened in it. It was so boring. Not as boring as Never Seen, but really freaking boring still. Still pretty boring. I did not like this book. Um, I did like my little Keefe's bag, my little Kofi moment. I love Kofi. It's actually Keefe, like it's K-E-E-P-H-I-E, -E -E, but it literally, Keefe doesn't sound different than actual Keefe, so I say Kofi so you can actually tell the names are separate. Anyway, I just, I didn't, this is boring. Even like the whole ending, like the scene, the cover scene was okay, and then the scene, the whole big fight scene in this book was okay, but even my granny and I agreed that even though the fight scenes happened, they just didn't feel that eventful. I was like, yo granny, I didn't really like the fight scenes. I felt like nothing happened while they were fighting and somebody almost died. Granny's like, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. That just reminds me. Grady, you have to tell us something. Something at the end of this book, Grady and Sophie happens between them. And I'm reading this the the seventh book, and I don't. It's not been brought back up. I'm all the way up to Legacy, and I still. It's not been mentioned. It hasn't been mentioned. What the heck, Shannon? Did you just forget about that? I want to know what happened after uh, Nightfall. I was actually, the entire month of June, I was kind of like in a slump. I really didn't read any books except the Keep of the Lost Cities books with my granny. And I did read some books, but in the next wrap up, I'm hoping that I will have those books to talk about because I started them in this month and I did not finish them because I do not like the way they are going and I'm bored. Anyway, I, this is one of those books that I started at the beginning of June and I ended up only finishing because I had uh, like a few more, I had, uh, Kindle Unlimited for free for 30 days. So that is Along the Resident Edge by uh, Rob J. Hayes. Um, I heard about this book from uh, Holly Hart's Books and I was really excited to read it. She gave it five out of five stars and I was like, oh, it sounds good. I was a little apprehensive about the description of it, but I was like, it sounds good and everything. And it just wasn't for me. The world building is really, really good. I do think that the world building is phenomenal. I think the magic system is really cool. I think the uh, writing is really good. The writing is definitely my favorite part about this entire book. It just wasn't for me. I didn't really care about any of the characters. And I don't know. I just wanted it to be over. And then the whole, every time, like, near when... When we got near the end of the book, and by end I mean about 60 pages in, I just started skipping the whole flashback scenes. I was like, I don't care about the Iran Academy of Magic. I was like, I don't want to hear about your backstory, Aska. I don't care. I just want to be done with this book. So, mm, I didn't, it's, mm, if, if the uh, plot sounds good to you, I would definitely recommend picking this book up. It is a indie self-published book, but it is very high quality for a self-published book. So, if it sounds up your alley, I would definitely recommend picking it up. It just didn't really click with me, and I just didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping I would. And the final book I read is Acrobat by Sarah J. Maas. Ah, it's back! It's back for the third year in a row! Woo! So, like I said,
said, I was in a little bit of a slump all month of uh, June. And this seems to be my go-to get me the heck out of a slump book. And during June, Sarah J. Mass announced the title of the Nesta and Cassian book, A Court of Flames Smoke. It has no and in it, so it's like A Court of Flaming Smoke. A Court of Flaming Starlight. Is that what it is? It's got flames in it, doesn't it? I don't know. I hate, I don't like Nesta. So I, d I don't like her, so I don't really care about that book. But it was announced anyway, that's what I'm saying. And um, I reread this. I was like, I'm just going to pick it up and read my favorite parts. And then I picked it up on the 29th, and I just started reading it at 10 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, I read 103 pages, and I, was, I picked it up the next day. And I was like, all right, we'll just read a little bit more. And then before I know it, I was on Snapchat, and I was like, um, I didn't expect, I didn't plan on spending my entire day reading, rereading Akamath, but that's what I did. So, um, yes, five out of five stars to this book, like always. Um, and honestly, something I realized, besides the fact this is my go-to and get me out of a slump book, uh, I don't like Thera. Like, the more I read this book, the more I don't like Thera. So I hope I like Nest reading from Nesta's point of view more because I do not like reading from Farrah's point of view. I was thinking some some of the stuff Farrah does, I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. Stop it. Stop doing that. It's so annoying. But Anyway guys, that's going to be the end of this uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe down below because I post videos on this channel every single Monday. And my next video going up is actually going to be a bookshelf tour. So you're going to see this shelf in all of its beauty. So uh, look forward to that by subscribing and turning on the notifications bell. And um, yeah, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all those fun things. I and mean, yep, I'm going to go. In case you guys didn't know, I post videos every Monday. What am I doing? What What is my outro again? I know the last line, but I literally don't know up to that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. I love you all so very much. And do not forget that I am still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, guys.